So I love making crazy setups. So this setup, I'll show you, it's a Studio MIDI guitar by Jamstick. I have TRS MIDI going into a DEN MIDI cable that goes into this Tascam Model 12 mixer. And the MIDI comes right back out and goes over here. That's the red wire from there. It goes into the Arduino Boy Pro, which converts the MIDI signal into something that the Game Boy can understand. That's what's going through this green cable. So this uh, is set to MGB mode, and the software on the Game Boy is MJ MGB by Trash80. It's a synth software, four channel. Um, so I could send up to four notes in, into the Game Boy from the MIDI guitar. But that's not it. I also have quarter inch TRS, no, two quarter inch jack of the guitar going into the mixer as just a guitar signal. And then the signal from the guitar goes back into the iPad through this USB-C cable into the USB-C hub and it's powered um, by another USB-C to A. And then and that mess of wires over there is the power adapter. Um, so the guitar comes back out from channel six. See the guitar is going in. Channel six from the model 12 right there in AUM. And then it goes back out seven and eight into the mixer. So whatever effects I use on the iPad will come into channel seven and eight on the mixer. And then also the, the MIDI can be trans uh, transmitted through the USB-C cable to the iPad as well. So that's what's controlling the, the Model D, the Moog. And it also goes out seven and eight, so I can hear it on the mixer. And then uh, I have an instance of um, Spacecraft with just a, a, like a beat that's gonna be, I guess, looped. It's a granular synth slash sampler. And it's going through a reverb called Cloud Reverb Stratosphere and that I'll go out seven and eight as well. So um, this is my second take of this video because I recorded everything um, into the iPad and screen recorded the iPad, but the problem was the audio wasn't recorded because the iPad only recognizes one output at once and it recognized the Model 12, so I was listening to it through headphones but not recording it here. And I did not do that in the trial, so whoops. Uh, here we go. I'm gonna bring in one instrument at a time so we hear the difference. We're gonna start with the Moog bass. Then we're gonna bring in the Electribe, or whatever it's called, Wave, Korg. Sunriser with a Cloud Reverb. Just a line of guitar. And the Game Boy. Strum some chords, I'm sure this is gonna be a disaster. It's pretty awesome.
Cool. So when making this video, I recorded about six hours of video and jamming and just trying different things out, updating the guitar, tuning it, showing you all this stuff. And none of it was recorded. None of the audio was recorded. I have tons of video with me just banging around on this guitar, uh, room sound, and that's it. So what I have here in this video is not as elaborate and kind of just me in the FU mode at the end of a long day. So sorry about that, but here I'm going to read some of my notes that I wrote down so you can understand where I was coming from and the cool things I found out and all the stuff I would have had in the video, but whatever. Here you go. I'm going to read it. All right. First of all, I'll go over problems. Uh, the first problem I had was uh, I screen recorded the iPad with AUM running in the background. That's what I was just talking about. I have done this several times with the Model 12, but this setup was new and I should have just recorded the sound on the mixer's built-in recorder which is what I did for the second version. The second thing was I used uh, my Jamstick USB-C cable to charge the iPad, which was not made for iPad. It didn't work. And the iPad wasn't charging. It just kept draining and, you know, eventually it just died. The third thing was unplugging the Adreno Boy Pro to do the setup part of the video. It stopped receiving power. So I swapped out that cable with my teenage engineering cable and started it right back up. I must have troubleshoot that for an hour. I could not figure out why I wasn't getting any signal. But I, I don't know if it was just a faulty USB-C cable. If I had a, like a cat gnaw on it or something. I don't know. Who knows? I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, fourth thing was, um, since I wanted to talk about tuning and updating, the lack of audio from the iPad rendered this footage useless as well. That's what I talked about already. Uh, fifth thing, iPad crashes sometimes. It just does. It just does. There we go. Uh, the sixth thing, triggering something that does not normally get an MPE signal might not behave correctly, like the MGB and their Drano Boy. That can be tamed with settings, trial and error. Yeah, this video is just me jamming on it. It doesn't really uh, show the power. Uh, honestly, the first video did. I know I keep talking about that, but uh, it's very upsetting. But um, yeah, I mean, moving forward, I'm going to make more videos about this and not just the jam stick or the Model 12 or my setup, but um, just kind of going over everything. I will do more of just the jam stick in the next one. I know I, ever, I haven't done that since that video of the unboxing. I get asked a lot of questions about that. Um, the things I learned while making this video, I have a little section of that in my notes. Even when making a complex setup, keep it as simple as possible. I learned two new apps for um, video. I use one called Double Take by Filmic Pro, and it records both cameras at the same time. So you have, like, I was holding the camera and showing my setup, and my face was on the other side, and it records them separately. And I thought it was going to be like a picture-in-picture -picture thing, and it wasn't. They were separate files, which is amazing. Big files, but whatever. Um, uh, using the SD card from the Model 12 and an iPad hub, the stems match up perfect. Of course, why would they not? Um, in Cubasis 3. The time code for Lumen Fusion was still a little strange, but I could easily match frames by eye. Yeah, they they were definitely different timestamps. Um, but, I mean, it's once you get the hang of it, they're pretty similar, and it's, it's very easy to get the hang of it. It's better than using a clapboard or uh, kind of guessing by the wave in the audio or like I do a lot of like one, two, and waves or weird words. Like I had cats meow on one of them. I don't know what that was about. But anyway, uh, let's see. The third thing, the Model 12 mixer when using the Logic. Oh, this is great. This is something, had I not messed up the video, I would have never known this. The Model 12 mixer when using Logic Protocol can be a DAW controller for ARIA Pro on iPad. Meaning the faders, pans, and transport control are all in perfect sync and the mixer... And it is awesome, I wrote that. <laughs> um, number four, you can use different MIDI outputs from the guitar for different things, like the Bluetooth for an iPad synth and the TRS MIDI for like Apex Station or the OPZ or NTS-1, all synths that I have. Um, or like the K2, also have that. Um, 
The Model 12's MIDI settings out of the box are basically through, so nothing happens. It's just in and out. Um, there's no like sequencing, there's no uh, recording MIDI data or anything like that. Oh, it can send a, a, a master clock out, the Tascam Model 12. Um, so when you press play, stop record or whatever, it, it will send that out to your drum machine or whatever. So when it comes back in the, the Tascam, when you're recording it, it'll all be in sync. So, I mean, it's just like a different work flow, basically. And of course, with MIDI, you could do the DAW control and control like Aurea Pro or Logic, Cubase, Ableton. There's settings for all those in there. So basically, I just wanted to push the jam stick with the basic settings. I didn't change anything. I went on the, the jam stick site. I went on my jam stick uh, app, and I did not change anything. Normally, I go in and tweak things and make it sound better and get rid of latency. And if there's any sensitivity issues, like if I'm doing all chords, you know, I'll put a higher threshold. And then if I'm doing like some solos or something, I put a little lower. I didn't change any settings on the MGB, the software for the Game Boy. I didn't change any settings on the Arduino Boy. So that's all out of box, basically. Except for, you know, I put the setting on MGB. There's five settings on the Arduino Boy, but um, I don't. So I guess I did change the setting on that. I don't think there's any other settings or parameters on that. Um, I did update the firmware on the Jamstick. I, I have not used the Jamstick, honestly, for the last couple of months. So, uh, I mean, I use it for a guitar, like, regularly, but I haven't used the MIDI section of it for a while just because, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to sound so good as a guitar. I just started jamming on it all the time and using that and uh, actually sold my uh, Telecaster that I've had for about 15 years. That's probably longer than that. And uh, I got rid of my MIDI keyboard too, so it replaced both of those things. Um, I do have an Aphex station that I could use as a keyboard or the OPZ, but that's more like a remote control, so that doesn't really involve playing or a mod wheel or anything. I have a note here, Game Boy sent sound. When I purchased the Adreno Boy, I was told that the MIDI guitar would probably not work, and so I put it on the back burner and just forgot about it. I never tried it. So yeah this was a this was a big test on that for me i wanted to see if that would work and then i just wrote some notes about it just it, it needs some adjustments because the, the a string was sending a signal to one channel the b string was sending it up to another channel and the d string was triggering the noise channel so you can definitely not play chords um with that setup any other questions just uh put them in the comments below and i'll address them in the next segment i'm uh, gonna start working on it tomorrow so thanks for watching like and subscribe Wow.